Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Today I'm excited to bring you a new series on this channel called TypeScript is nice. I don't have time to come up with a name. We gotta do five videos, five levels, bring in the Mr. Beast graphics, make it entertaining, put a timer. People love that. Okay, so let's get into it. We'll start off simple. What is TypeScript? What does it do? And how can we use it? Today's sponsor. Well, that's, that's just too long to read, I'm sorry. So what is TypeScript and how is it useful for us? You can imagine TypeScript being kind of like a DLC, like a mod for your game, you know, like in Sims where you can add a mod to just snap items to a grid, or in Skyrim where you can add different characters and stuff like that. You can imagine TypeScript as a mod for JavaScript where it just adds static typing functionality to it, right? So JavaScript is a loosely typed language. And what that means is I can do something like this. I can create a function called double number, for example, I can pass in a parameter called number that we can pass it down in just a second. And then here, if I add return number times two, for example, like that, I can come down here and invoke this function. So I can say double number, but the thing is I can pass in two here, which is fine, which is gonna return me four. However, I can also pass down a string like hello. And as you can see, there's no like complaints here whatsoever. Now, this might be a simple example here, but when you have a bigger code structure where you have lots of functions and lots of parameters that needs to be passed down, you might not know the parameters that you need to pass down or the types might not be correct, which might result in errors in your code. And in most cases, like 90% of the times, the bugs and errors in your codes are usually types that are not passed in correctly or a parameter might be undefined and it's not handled correctly. So now bringing this example over to TypeScript, I can type a number here and if I add a colon here, I can define what type of type this parameter is. So the three primitive types, you might know of them, boolean, string, and number. And in JavaScript, you don't have float or integers like that, it's all just a general number. and the types are reflected, so the names are pretty much the same. So you add the colon here and the type for a number is number, okay? If you'd have a string parameter here, it would be string. Same for boolean, you just say boolean, okay? Now it's legal, it's absolutely legal to do it with uppercase there, that would work, but you can only do it up to 12 grams. Uh, but you're gonna see it down like uh, lowercase usually, so I'll just do number like that. Uh-oh, and take a look. Now when we have a look here, it errors out. It says, hey, argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type number. So there we go. So TypeScript lets us know, hey, there's an error here. You're not intended to pass down a string where the function requires a number. Okay, here's another example. Let's say we have a user somewhere in our code, and then we try to access that, like in JavaScript, right? Uh, sorry, in JSX and React, it would be like user dot whatever. So let's say we'll do user, yeah, user dot email. Okay, and you're cool, and you're done. You're programming that, and cool. So you leave it at that, and then eventually you find out that when you go to it, this is undefined. All right, but there's like nothing telling you here that it's undefined. When you create an object in JavaScript, like I could try to access here a property that doesn't exist yet. Uh, and that works fine, like it's not gonna throw any errors. It, this is gonna return undefined, but it's not gonna say anything else. Whereas if this would be in TypeScript, all right, just having a TypeScript when you try to access a property uh, that's not on the users, so like email, it's gonna let you know. See, it says property email does not exist on type name or ID. And there's lots of other instances like this in JavaScript that you're gonna find where, where you wanna do a string concatenation, where you just have a string, you can add it to a number and that works fine. Or you might have an array of numbers here and then even here, like you could push in strings or objects accidentally. Uh, but later on, like this might cause bugs and affect your code badly. Okay, let me show you something else. You might have heard of this term called inferring a type. And in most cases in TypeScript, you don't actually want to type out everything uh, because TypeScript can do it for you. So if I do something like, hey, I have a title here and set it equal to hello TypeScript. All right, like I don't need to add a colon to this and say type string, okay? Uh, 
TypeScript's automatically gonna know that I assigned a type, uh, a string here. And if I hover over this, see, it automatically inferred it for me. I can do the same for a number. So I can say let price, for example, send that equal to 35. You're gonna see that is a type of number now. And then in JavaScript, you only really have, uh, it's you only have number you don't have like integers floats or stuff like that uh, it's all numbers and all the like primitives for the types for these are pretty much the same so string is going to be as type string right uh so you do string right and then oh, strong string and then this one's pri uh, sorry number and then this one's number and then you can also have like a toggle that's a type of boolean but again as long as you have the value assigned here uh, you can just omit all of this and it's automatically going to be inferred for you now let me show you something interesting what if i do const uh, user here and set that equal to develop by add well if i hover over it as you can see it's not a type of string anymore this is a type of string this isn't a type of string what's the deal with that huh explain Add help. This is hard. I know. I never understood it for the longest time. So essentially what happens here is the type that gets assigned to the constant here is not a type of string. It's a type of develop by add. All right. That's the type develop by add. Or if I have a number here, like a total I said that equal to 25, this is not a type of number. It's type of 25, all right? The actual literal value. That's because we have a constant and constants can change. So the type is only gonna be the type that's set right here, all right? Whereas here, let is reassignable. So then TypeScript is like, okay, well, I don't need to narrow it down all the way to that specific type because if it's immutable, right? If it's a const, then there's, there, there's not other value that can be there. But if it's a let, then, well, it can be any type of string, right? Does that make sense? Cool. Now, when it comes to like functions, uh, you can also add a return type to kind of add like a little check, you know, to make sure that you're getting the thing that you want to get. So let's say you're making like a, what are we making gang? A multiplier, a multiplier, multiplier. Okay, equal to. So let's say I want a number, right? So A is a number. Uh, B number, no, we'll do so. We'll do like a multiplier instead. So let's call this uh, like value, right? And then here we'll have the multiplier. And this is gonna be a number as well, so that's fine. And then here we'll return, we'll do value times multiplier, right? And hit save. What's the error now? What's wrong? Oh, here, we forgot the damn parentheses, everyone. And then another parentheses. And then, oh my God. Okay, so here basically I can add another number here and this is gonna specify, hey, this function should just always return a number. So with this video, my, my idea is not to overwhelm you with a lot of information. So just sit on that, like what I showed you now. And like the grander scheme of things I wanna explain to you is, when you're building out software and it gets larger and larger, you're gonna have to have this mental model of how things work in your application. And when you're working with pure JavaScript, you're gonna have to keep that mental model in your head. And TypeScript essentially allows you to map all of that down in your code base, right? So for example, like, let me show you the next 14 course here. So this one is a bit more complex when it comes to its structure because uh, we can create orders and then we can create products and those products can have product variants. Those variants can have images associated with them, right? So it's the data structure gets a bit complex and to keep track of like when I'm fetching the data, for example, right? Let's see if I'm doing a fetch here. Like I'm fetching the data here, but if I don't have any TypeScript, I could do data dot what? <laughs> like, how am I gonna get out of that? But with TypeScript here, as you can see, I'm using Drizzle here with a server action. I can have access to anything in that data. Look at that. I can see everything. And when I change my schema, this automatically updates as well. But not only that, like the most difficult part is when the application grows in, in scale and you want to modify something. So let's say I just decide to one day go in my schema and uh, make maybe my products here, another mandatory um, field. So maybe I'll do like, this is just a random, let's say I decide to add 
a category or something, right? That's a type of text uh, category. Again, this is just random, but let me just add that quickly. Okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. But now look, that kind of ripples through my whole code base now. So I can see, look, errors are popping up because those specific functions are not gonna work anymore because TypeScript recognized that, hey, look, this new product now, control space, boom, requires a category. So this is where like the real benefit is not to like have to think of like what is actually going wrong and just kind of TypeScript taking over and, and kind of covering your ass in 99% of the cases. Okay, so I'll leave you at that for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a subscribe, drop a like. Yeah, go on, yeah.